Hello my dear health seekers, Inga from Health Origins here and welcome to week 12 for meal prep for weight loss show. And today, since we're going through such turbulent times with the coronavirus and self-isolation, um, I present to you two comforting, um, easy to make, um, easy to throw together dishes that you could use a lot of you know different kind of leftover bits and pieces you have at home so you know if you've got some extra vegetables you can incorporate them if you've got some bits of different beans or lentils um, you could put them in so uh, the two new dishes that I'm going to be making is a bean chili so a yummy vegan bean chili. So this is the first time I'm making this recipe in particular. So fingers crossed it works out nice, but all ingredients sound delicious, so it should be fine. And then I'm also trialing a dump and bake a chickpea and rice casserole. Um, so we're gonna be just dumping all the ingredients in the casserole dish and then baking them in the oven. So let's begin. dump and bake chickpea and rice casserole so I've got the ingredients here we're gonna start by preheating my um, my induction hob so I've got one and a half cups of stock here and um, so this is just uh, vegetable stock um, that I've, I've just made up but actually I forgot the main thing to make it kind of a chicken flavor, if you have, um, use some um, chicken seasoning. Um, if you don't have specific chicken seasoning, I'll link to my recipe down below and in the description, uh, in, sorry, in the card above, of how you can make your own chicken seasoning, vegan chicken seasoning. Um, so I need to grab this. So I made a fresh batch of this chicken seasoning today um, and I'm going to use a generous tablespoon of this seasoning. This one doesn't have any salt or anything so it's not going to be too salty with my stock. If you don't have a chicken seasoning or you, you know you can skip it so that's optional um, but I, I want to add it so that the casserole tastes chickeny. So, um, so that's that, my spatula. So I'm just heating up my stock with the um, chicken seasoning. Also, we're going to need two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. So one and two. So mix that up. And then I've got three quarters of a cup um, of coconut milk so three quarters of a cup I'm gonna add that in so this will give the nice creaminess to this dish the kind of natural fussiness to this um, distribute the flavor that's looking and smelling delicious already so basically while this is heating up we got to dump everything in here right so um, what we have um, I've got um, maybe 200 150 grams about five uh, medium mushrooms and actually this recipe I wanted to mention where I'm getting this from I'm getting this from Caitlin's uh, Caitlin shoemaker um, is a lady she's a youtuber and also has a blog so um, this recipe um, uh, is from her blog called um, from my bowl, I believe it's called. Um, I'll link, I'll link for you guys to the original recipe as well. So this is uh, her recipe that I'm trying. Her recipes are normally really good, so fingers crossed this one works as well. So I've got the mushrooms. I've got one um, celery stick uh, sliced really thinly. Um, then I've got half a white onion as well. Um, diced small I've got my um, garlic 
So I'm going to just leave that for the minute because I don't want to get my spoons um, contaminated. What I'm going to do, she uses just fresh parsley, but I think that would, you know, this dish would be nice actually with some, um, with some one teaspoon of dried um, parsley as well. Did I say barley? Parsley. So I've got some fresh parsley chopped up here as well for, you know, for the end to put it just when you serve, but I've put one teaspoon of dried parsley in here. And I've got one cup of brown basmati rice. You know, um, on my channel I try and incorporate as, as many whole foods as possible and not to have refined pastas, refined rice. Um, so I've got brown uh, basmati rice. Um, if you use white rice, which um, Caitlin actually does, you need to put your oven on 175 um, degrees Celsius and cook it for 45 minutes, whereas I'm going to be doing it on 200 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes because obviously um, brown rice takes longer to cook through. So one cup, uh, about 185 grams it says, so I measured in grams. So rice, and then I've drained one uh, tin of chickpeas. Um, so it's about two cups she's saying, this is about a cup and a half, but that should do. And then I've got my um, three cloves of garlic. She says two, three cloves of garlic. I put three, just want it nice and flavorful. So I'm going to just mix this whole mixture up and actually my, uh, my liquid is boiling already. So I'm just going to quickly mix this through. To distribute all the ingredients evenly. So that's that. And I'm gonna, yeah, it's proper boiling now. So yeah, get this liquid to a boil and then just pour over evenly on this um, rice and chickpea mixture. So there we go. Nice. So just Try and immerse everything in the liquid. Perfect. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a piece of parchment paper. Uh, that's optional. If you don't have one, you can just use just um, tin foil. But I, I quite like putting um, a, like a barrier between the food and tin foil and um, parchment paper, and then reflective side up you want to put a uh, tin foil and then just kind of crimp it up so I'll crimp it around the uh, handles and try to make sure it kind of stays put so that is covered I think my pieces of paper are slightly a bit big um, so yeah so that is now ready to go into the oven um, on 200 degrees Celsius for um, 60 minutes, so for one hour. It's quite a long time, so but it'll nicely cook and all the flavors should combine all the ingredients like onion and um, and what else, mushroom we put there and celery should like nicely cook through. Um, yeah, so I'll put that in the oven and we'll get on with the chili. How easy was that chickpea rice casserole, right? It was just um, such such a quick dish. Um, now it's just a waiting game. But while we wait, I'm going to be making uh, my chili. So uh, there's quite a few ingredients. Um, and the recipe was from the website. Let me tell you where it was from. best uh oh sorry brand new vegan so um the site is brand new vegan and it's titled best damn instant pot vegan chili right so i've um i've used that as a base but i've done some modifications to it so we'll see how that um goes but then uh, i can't see it going wrong really because it's just quite um simple um, ingredients and quite a simple process. 
So I'll start by putting my instant pot on saute mode. Um, and if you don't have a instant pot, then you can do the same thing uh, with your frying pan and then a pot as well. Um, so that's on. Yeah, so um, a frying pan and just a normal pot, except that you will need to cook it for longer. Um, so I'm just going to let that heat up for a minute. So what we'll do first is fry our base ingredients. So that is onion. Um, so I've got about one um, kind of medium to large onion chopped. I've got one red bell pepper diced. I've got celery, two celery sticks um, diced. I've got one large carrot also diced. Um, then I've got maybe four or five mushrooms sliced as well. Um, so that's kind of our base ingredients and we're going to fry those. Uh, and actually I've got about um, three cloves of garlic here as well. So the most important thing which I finally learned with my Instant Pot after burning so many times is never leave your Instant Pot frying unattended. Before I used to just put some onion and then just go chopping some other ingredients and by the time I come it seems like just a minute or so it's already burnt. So for that not to happen don't leave your Instant Pot um, unattended. So I'm going to add the onion. So as you can hear it's um, sizzling nicely so the Instant Pot has preheated. And it probably it displays hot there. Um, celery. So I'm going to add all our base ingredients. Onion, celery, uh, red pepper. And, and the carrot. And I'm going to cook that for a few minutes. And we're going to add the, um, the mushrooms. And then finally we'll add the garlic. So I'll just let that fry for um, a couple of minutes and if it starts sticking to the bottom um, I can add a couple of um, tablespoons of stock that I've got here. Um, so it's two cups of um, just vegetable stock. Um, so if we go through, um, over the rest of the ingredients just briefly while we wait for this to fry. Um, I've got one uh, tin of chopped tomatoes and one can of actually peeled pureed um, tomatoes as well. Uh, you could use pesata if you've got it, but I just had some peeled plum tomatoes um, because the chopped tomatoes are hard to find. Um, it seems uh, people have um, kind of bought all the chopped tomatoes, but they're still peeled tomatoes, which is you know just as great. So I've blended that um, with a stick blender and it's kind of like passata and then I've got a quarter of a cup of ketchup here um, I've got some um, yeast extract so your marmite if you like um, I've got some oregano I've got some parsley um, I've got half a teaspoon of black pepper and for the beans this time I'm using canned or tinned beans because um, I haven't got any uh, cooked to hand but if you've got some you could just use some kidney beans, black beans, a mixture of it um, so this is kind of leany and this is just mixed beans so two tins um, and they are like 400 grams each so let me just mix this it's frying up nicely, it's not, getting stu uh, it's not sticking yet which is good so i um, got some beans here um, and for this recipe you can either use pieces of seitan for example if you've got some or I'm using a smoked tofu so it's clear spot smoked tofu about um, 200 grams I think this one is so I've just chopped it and it's got nice smoky um, flavor but that's optional you don't have to add any kind of meat substitute if you like um, you know it's up to you then I've got a third of a cup of red lentil, so this will thicken up 
the, the chili for it because the red lentils they kind of disintegrate after cooking for a little while. Um, and then I've got a half a cup of brown lentils as well, just to give these this kind of more of a meaty texture um, there with the beans. Um, I've got some smoked paprika, which will give the nice smoky uh, flavor. You could use chipotle chili powder, which the original recipe uh, said. So this is like a smoked chili, um, but we are just, you know, we can't um, have too much um, spice. So that's why the smoked paprika works really well for us. Ground cumin. Um, so this is a uh, a batch I made freshly today, so I've just toasted some cumin seeds um, and ground it up, uh, them up. So we'll need a couple of teaspoons of that. Um, and the way I toast my seeds is I um, toast them on kind of medium low for until I can start smelling them, and then I switch it off and leave it on the hot pan for a couple of minutes, and then it kind of just finishes toasting, and then I cool them a bit and then blend them, blend them up in my uh, spice grinder. Um, so yeah, so, oh, it's so aromatic. The cumin, freshly, cu uh, fresh cumin is amazing. Um, then I've got my usual onion powder. So it's a teaspoon of onion powder and half a teaspoon of um, garlic powder in there. And then I've got some chili flakes, right? I'm not gonna use too much of it um, because we just, can't stand too much heat. However, I do have a couple of tablespoons of marinated chopped jalapenos, so I'll add these um, afterwards at the end. Uh, once we finish, I'll just mix those in, um, and that will give the most spice, I think, for us. So I'll just use this very sparingly. Maybe I'll put a few flakes in there. But if you like your chili to be a bit more um, fiery, then uh, then by all means add, because the recipe actually said to put a quarter of a cup of chili powder, I'm not kidding. <laughs> when I seen that I was like, oh my goodness, I would never put that much chili powder in anything. But you know, if you're chili uh, fans, if you're heat fans, then that probably would be amazing for you. And then I've got um, some soy sauce here as well, just add a couple of tablespoons for the flavor. So that's out, ah, and molasses, sorry. So molasses will give the darkness to the chili. It'll color a little bit of the, the light beans and the sweetness, so it'll kind of counteract the, the sourness of the tomatoes and give a little bit of sweetness. So we'll put a couple of tablespoons of molasses, which is just what gets refined out of sugar cane. So all the um, kind of nutrients, um, minerals, so it's quite nutritious, molasses but it also has a little bit of sweetness as well. Um, so it adds kind of nice flavor to either sweet or savory dishes. So that that's, has fried quite nicely. I'm gonna add the mushrooms now. I'm gonna add the mushrooms and I'm gonna add the garlic as well. So I'm gonna fry this for a minute or two with the garlic. You don't want to over fry it with the garlic because it gets burned quite easily so normally just for the last minute. So I've just added that. It's, um, it smells delicious already and if um, it started to stick a little bit to the bottom I'm just going to use a couple of tablespoons. These are tiny so Use a few tablespoons of stock to just deglaze it. So we'll let that cook for a couple more minutes and then we're gonna put everything together. So I think it's um, cooked a little bit now. So I'm gonna be just adding the rest of the ingredients. So important is to add all the spices um, all the um, ingredients and then the recipe stipulates to put all the tomato sauce things uh, and tomatoes, chopped tomatoes at the top and not to mix it, which I found quite interesting. So we're going to try and do that. Um, so now I'm going to just start adding all the ingredients. So I'm going to add 
about a tablespoon of molasses, a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce, so a couple of tablespoons here. And um, I'm just going to try and wash my spoon in the stock to just use up all the molasses here. And um, while that's washing off, two teaspoons of um, cumin, so round cumin, two teaspoons. This is so nice and fragrant. So two teaspoons, one teaspoon of um, smoked paprika here to give that smoky taste. Then I'm going to put in the one teaspoon of onion powder and garlic, half a teaspoon of garlic powder here. So to give extra flavor. Um, then I need um, actually a fresh spoon. I need to put some oregano and parsley. So a teaspoon of each oregano and parsley. So one teaspoon. There we go. Half a teaspoon of pepper um, in here. Then some um, chili flakes, so I'm really scared to put a lot. I'll probably put a quarter of a teaspoon of chili flakes, just a few chili flakes, because like I said, I'll be putting in um, my jalapenos, so marinated chopped jalapenos. So um, that will do. So I'm putting in the uh, red lentils in here for thickening it all up. Then my brown lentils, um, this is a half a cup, um, and then our beans. So I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna actually add the beans with their water as well, just for extra liquid. So these are um, cannellini beans, so we'll just add that on. And then also mixed beans, so I've got here some black beans, chickpeas, haricot beans, pinto beans, red kidney beans, and azuki beans. So it's quite a mixture of beans in here. And again, I'm going to add the water in with them as well. Because these are not salted beans, it's just beans and water. So if yours are salted, you might want to uh, rinse and drain your beans. Uh, that I've got to add tofu in here. Need one teaspoon of the yeast. So add one teaspoon of yeast. Actually, I'll just add the yeast into the stock. It'll be easier to um, to wash off. So this is my um, two cups of um, vegetable stock with some um, yeast in there. Yeast extract. And I'm going to just mix all of that mixture up. Um, then I'm going to uh, actually add the ketchup and mix it in. So the ketchup I'll mix it in. This should be really good. And such an easy recipe, you could chuck in different bits of vegetables. So if you had some parsnips to use up, some courgettes for example. Um, you could even put some um, potatoes in there as well if you wanted to. But you could add um, just different bits and pieces. So my saute mode I think finished now. So I'm just going to switch it off. Cancel. So now I nicely mixed everything. Um, I'm going to add the chopped tomatoes on the top. 
like the the recipe saying and um, just distribute it evenly on the top and not mix it and then I've got my passata as well I'm just gonna pour it on the top there you go so this is um, getting up towards the max line not quite there yet um, and I think that is it just to make sure I didn't miss any ingredients because um, easy to happen when you've got so many um, I think that's it so yeah so all we've got at the end we're gonna just add the um, marinated chopped jalapenos um, and that will be it so the original recipe um, says to cook it for 10 minutes on high pressure um, and leave it for natural release for 10 more minutes and then kind of release it what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna cook for 15 minutes high pressure because I've got some lentils here that I want to make sure they get cooked um, so 15 minutes on high pressure and then I'm gonna let it natural release completely so that might take another 15 and 20 minutes we'll see so the chili is now done so it's done its natural release so I've cooked it for 15 minutes and then it's done natural release probably another 15 or 20 minutes um, look at it is beautiful it's nice and thick as well so let me mix that through yum so this will be so yummy um, to have on probably quinoa or buckwheat because we already have um, I've cooked two dishes so the rice and chick, uh, chickpea casserole dish that I've showed you and also I made a risotto like our staple and um, we do a lot of weeks um, so yes yeah, so to change up we'll probably have um, some different green and um, it'll probably be either quinoa buckwheat or even barley we'll see what we've got so let me do a little taste test for you this is looking beautiful so let's do the taste testing ah I forgot we need our jalapenos so I'll have to uh, sprinkle it all in there for that bit of extra heat I'm gonna just sprinkle them on so let me get, actually I didn't get any tofu, so I'm going to get a piece of tofu there as well. Mmm, oh my goodness, this is so good, so delicious, and I can taste a bit of heat from the jalapenos as well. And that minuscule amount of chili powder, uh, chili flakes that I put in before. Like I say, we're very, very sensitive to spices, so we don't put at all much. Mmm. Mmm. This is so good, guys. Yummy. So this will go so nicely out, out over any kind of grain. It will be delicious. So here I apologize, I had some technical difficulties, um, I did not record any voice, I was just introducing not one but two taste testers today, it's my mum who's visiting us and the usual taste tester Mark, so I got their help to taste test um, this rice chickpea casserole, so that's us trying it for the first time. And uh, you could probably tell from from their faces whether they like it or not. Um, I think they enjoyed it. My mom's giving you a thumbs up, so so that's a success, guys. Week twelve meal prep for weight loss is done. So I've got all the dishes that are prepared for the week so we've got our chili I've got two big bits of our uh, vegan chili then I've got our chickpea um, rice casserole dish as you can see it's only a little tiny bit left because we already me and my mum and my husband already had some for dinner it was delicious 
um, that I've got my risotto which I'll link to you in the description below and in the card above um, this is such a yummy and simple recipe to make then I've got some buckwheat I made to have with chili as well and here I've got my chicken seitan we haven't had seitan for a while so I'm sure my husband will enjoy that because he likes to have a little bit of bite um, and you can't get that bite from anything else apart from seitan that we've tried so far you can buy some store-bought um, kind of meat replacements as well if you like but um, but this is you know making it ourselves so this chicken seitan recipe I'll link for you in the description below and in the card above um, and it's using actually the chicken seasoning that I made myself as well freshly a new batch today I'll link to that one in the description below as well so if you're interested you could make the the chicken um, seitan as well so and uh, and of course um, we'll have some greenery uh, some fresh produce to go with this so um, we have all kinds of salad bits so you know Chinese leaf um, we've got uh, spinach we've got kale um, so for salads we also use courgette we also um, use green olives we use tomatoes um, yeah so we've got bits and pieces avocados obviously to make our um, my um, yummy simple avocado dressing and also my um, tahini dressing I'll link to both of these dressings below for you they're really really delicious so yeah and then we make smoothies as well in the morning so we've got some frozen berries um, we've got some kale we've got some um, seeds uh, that we use we've got Brazil nuts uh, for selenium that we make um, for our smoothies so that will be the lot I hope you enjoyed this video give me a like and if you're new here welcome to the channel and subscribe for more videos uh, meal prep for weight loss videos on Saturdays and on Wednesdays I do other yummy uh, vegan quick and tasty meals and remember food is fuel so be mindful of what you put in the body until next time